Stocks continue to grind higher as they have all year long. So let's talk about now the markets and your money and your investments all ahead of the Christmas holiday and that period between Christmas and New Year's, what they call the Santa Claus rally. Joining us for that is Hank Smith. He is Chief Investment Officer at Haverford Trust. And here on set is John Praveen, Senior Portfolio Manager at QMA. John and Hank, welcome to you both. Thank you. John, have you, and, and it's, this is the time of year to be honest. We're just going to come clean. <laughs> have you been surprised at the resilience of this market through, dare I say, impeachment proceedings, trade wars, Brexit, and we're having right now the best NASDAQ run in two years? Well, a little surprised by the strength and the breadth of the rally because we have had strong gains not only in the U.S., but in global market in markets outside the U.S. We have also had um, gains in the bond market. So surprised by the breadth of the markets, but not necessarily the direction. And the fact that they have moved higher is because they have looked through all of this uh, noise of trade tensions and Brexit because they had the support of central banks. But, it's, you know, Hank, I, and I hear that, but I don't, is it really noise? And we always say it's noise, but I wonder, you know, you're talking about trade wars shaving, you know, percents off GDP globally. You're talking about Brexit. <laughs> Nobody actually knows what's going to happen or what the impact is going to be. The impeachment, though unlikely, certainly, you know, it's one of three times in American history. These are big, big headline events. And again, the market has not cared one bit. Right. They're big headline events. But what's really important for uh, long term and even intermediate term returns are low inflation, low interest rates, GDP growth, earnings growth and balance sheets. And by the way, if we if we're late in the cycle, uh, it's extraordinarily how well capitalized the banking system is with tons of liquidity and really very little problem loans anywhere. So I think the market is paying attention to what is important and ignoring what emotionally grabs us, but ultimately is not important in terms of investing. Hank, everybody who's been on the last two days has been exceptionally bullish. You know, everything looks great. What like could the, go wrong? It's like the worst, worst sign ever. It's the polar opposite of a year ago <laughs> today when, when everybody was bearish. And, and everybody ended well, up being no. wrong a year ago. So what could go wrong right now in the next week, the next month, maybe the next quarter? Well, I think, Tom, the setup is you're going to have a slightly stronger economy next year, but the returns, the equity returns, are not going to be nearly as robust. So we're counseling uh, our investors to temper their expectations for returns. It might be high single digits, low double digits, but I don't think it's going to be 30 percent. I see you nodding your head. And that, in I agreement. think, will be so the surprise. Are you, you encouraging people to move out of equities and lighten up as a result? Is it expensive? No, uh, we are not uh, encouraging we, uh, our investors to move out of equities. Actually, we have uh, uh, increased our equity exposure and we are going to keep it at... Uh, because bonds, I think, are probably not going to do as well next year because bond yields are likely to rise given the stronger growth backdrop that we are I've likely to see. I've been hearing that see. for 30 years, the bond yields are going to go up. <laughs> <laughs> this will be the year. <laughs> no, well... <laughs> Last year, they, I mean, 2019, they went from 2.7 to 2.5 yeah. or even below. So we should probably get back to somewhere about 2%, 2.5% because of the stronger GDP growth in the U.S. and also a pickup in bond yields outside the United States because we have had a lot of negative bond yields in Europe, Japan, and other countries. In fact, 12 trillion of bond yields are in having negative yields. So if they start grinding higher, we should also see some upward pressure on U.S. Treasury yields. Okay. You know, H Hank, if you had to point to one yep. thing in the market next year that looks still sort of undervalued or fairly valued, because I don't think you can say maybe anything is completely undervalued at 19 and a half times forward earnings of the S&P 500. Is there one sector, one stock, one investment, anything that you see to go, yeah, that's going to be a good deal in 2020. <clears throat> well, Brian, <clears throat> we still believe that 11 years into an historic bull market, uh, you can get better income in equities and growth of income. Uh, and that is quite remarkable. So just uh, looking at uh, uh, equities relative to income and fixed income, uh, you're way ahead buying stocks. 
Uh, and yeah, I'll give you one, one stock that uh, we like very much that's selling for 10 times earnings, CVS, uh, not CBS, but CVS. And uh, we think there's a tremendous opportunity for multiple expansion there as they continue to beat on the top and bottom line, integrating the merger with Aetna. Um, and we like that uh, uh, very, very much coming into this year. You like that too? I also see you nodding your head. <laughs> no, I'm not going to talk about stocks. I can talk more about uh, regions and countries and things of that kind. So, I, you know, for the last uh, year and the last 10 years, we have had uh, the U.S. outperform international markets. Uh, maybe this is the year where may, we will probably see a, 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 a rotation out of the U.S. into international markets because they are likely to see stronger GDP growth, mm -hmm. stronger earnings growth. Uh, we are likely to see more fiscal stimulus in Europe um, and uh, also monetary yeah. stimulus.